Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview and review of this thing here from FreeSky. It's just coming out now. Uh, some of you may have seen it before in other videos, but this is the Vantac Rover 3 Tilt Rotor from FreeSky. It's fun to see some of the manufacturers branching out. Looked at the Interceptor, the FPV car from Emacs before Christmas, uh, building the Brain FPV wing at the moment, which is Brain FPV moving into the kits for flying wings. And now we've got this from FreeSky. Now, this, although it looks like a traditional tricopter in a very, very pretty outfit, is slightly different. Rather than the yaw authority or the ability to spin round being handled by tilting the rear motor, it's actually the front two motors that are articulated and controlled by two servos. And again, just to be clear, this is the production unit that I've got in here to have a look at. So if you order one, this is what you're going to get. Now, price is looking online about £115 for the model only. You are going to need a FreeSky radio to bind to it. It has a FreeSky uh, receiver inside. This one came non-EU, uh, but you can flash them relatively quickly if you want to change them over. And you'll also need a battery. It's going to run on a 3S battery and it'll take up to about a 1300 milliamp hour. If you've got those two things, you buy this thing, then you are up and flying. Now it is obviously FPV, it has a camera at the front, it has a VTX transmitter buried inside with the VTX antenna on the belly, which is a really cool idea. That means that you've got a nice clear view of that antenna if you're flying above head height. The size of this thing is about 310 by 300 millimeters. Height is about 120 millimeters. It is surprisingly lightweight. It's about 220 grams. And that's because rather than this outside being just like a plastic thing that clips onto a frame, it's actually the frame and does all of the other things as well. So similar to how a lot of DJI products are made up. 20 amp ESCs inside to run all the motors. The VTX is capable of up to 600 milliwatts, also supports pit mode, 25, 200, and everything else. The flight controller is one of the Free Sky flight controllers. It's the XSR F30. It has a built in XSR receiver. And the propellers originally on the pre production units were all two bladed four inch propellers. And now the front ones are tri bladed. So if you've already seen this and kind of thinking, okay, so tri-bladed props at the front, what else has changed? Let me just run through all the things that are different on this from maybe some of the pre-production units that you've seen. The first one is the manual has been updated significantly, so it's an awful lot easier to set up. It's clear how you set your radio up and how the channels all need to be. The tri-bladed props in the front, as I've already mentioned, the power connector has been changed to an XT30 power connector, and the antenna wires are routed differently. They now go along the outside of the rear prop and seem to work really well. There are updated firmware and settings in here, and I'll plug it into Betaflight in a moment. But the way this really comes is it's designed to be ready to fly. So if you set the radio up, as I'm going to show you in a minute, and bind it to the model, then you should be ready to go. But if you do want to play around, then there is a bit of work involved into getting into the flight controller, but you can do it, and then you can change the settings in beta flight. Speaking of beta flight, uh, we'll have a look at that in a second, but, but there are three flight modes configured. There's an acro, angle, and horizon mode set up out the box. And interesting on, online, I have seen color matched versions of the x light radio. So I don't know whether or not we'll see uh, ready to fly versions that will actually come with a radio as well that will match the kind of white, grey and orange setup that's actually on the model. To access beta flight you need to get into the flight controller and again you don't need to do this to fly it you can just follow the instructions and it'll fly okay but I'm fascinated to see what they've done and how this is all working because it does fly very nice but we'll talk more about that in a moment. So I'm going to connect to it, but first of all, I have to remove the bottom cover and then pry away the flight controller, which connects to the kind of power distribution board and ESCs underneath via a number of riser pins. So be very careful you prise that up and then you can easily get into the USB connector and plug it into Betaflight. Plugging it into Betaflight, it looks like this. Now, obviously, it looks upside down because I've got to have it that way on the bench in order to get access to the USB port. Now I'm going to enable expert mode. Let's just flick through this. So the ports, um, the only thing interesting is it's set for smart port. Now smart port is needed because the way you change the power levels 
on the VTX is using a little Lua script. Uh, so you need that smart port, except for Tricopter, D-Shot 600, motor stop isn't turned on, so as soon as you arm it, the motor's going to be running. The board and sensor alignment has changed because the flight controller is essentially upside down. There is the roll of 180 set. There, everything else looks pretty standard. Serial base S plus receiver, telemetry's turned on, so we get telemetry back to the radio. LED strips turned on, although there isn't one. Air mode, OSD, anti-grav, dynamic filter. Uh, and that's it really. Power and battery look like that if you're interested or you've lost the settings for yours. Failsafe is set to drop, which is exactly what I'd want it to be. PID tuning looks like this. Uh, interestingly set to profile two here. Let me just have a quick go through each of these. Uh, this is a really nice flyer. It's a very gentle machine. It doesn't have tons and tons of power. It's hovering just under half throttle. Uh, but it's interesting to see they've got different rate profiles here. But that's how it's all set up out the box. Receiver settings, RSSI is set up so that you can actually have your RSSI on the screen on Auxiliary 4 or Channel 8, which is a nice touch. Mode to set like this, this is how it came out of the box. So uh, you have an arming switch on Auxiliary 1 or Channel 5. You set up Channel 6 for your modes. Now in the low position, it's acro. Middle position, it's angle. High position is horizon. Now I don't have it that way. I'm going to change it. Uh, to be what I normally expect on models like this, which is angle is low, horizon is in the middle position, rate at the top, and that is pretty much everything that's set. They haven't done anything in adjustments to change uh, rate profiles and PIDs. Interestingly, in the servos, you can't kind of see anything in here about the, some of the magic they're doing to rotate the front two motors. You're going to have to go into the on-screen display. By default, that's how it's laid out, and that'll be fine. If you're not into changing things in beta flight, then you're probably going to be happy with that. Personally, I expect certain things in certain places, so I came in here while I had it connected and had a bit of a goof about. Jump into the CLI and see the version. And the version, which you can actually see in the top left-hand corner, is 3.4.1. So it isn't the latest version of Betaflight, but that is kind of not what this thing is about. If you want the latest versions of Betaflight and Flight Like You Stole It, they're probably better models. This is definitely aimed at the ready-to-fly crowd. So you get this, you set up your radio, bind it, and away you go. Speaking of setting up the radio, let's talk a little bit about this next. Now, you need to set the radio up so it looks like this. In the mixer, you need it to have throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. So that's going to be channels 1, 2, 3, 4. You need to set channel 5 as an arming switch, channel 6 as a mode switch, and you can also set up channel 7, talks about it in the manual, as a tilt switch, which will work in horizon mode. Now, if you're interested in me sharing this model that I'm using here, just so you can pop it onto your radio, then do leave a comment down below and uh, I'll pop a link to it. There are a couple of other things that you need to do before you connect your radio to this model. To bind it, there is a little bind button on the flight controller that you can get to. And then to bind the model, what you do is push that button and you can get to it through the vents at the bottom and then power up the model and that will take it into bind mode, similar to the bind button on a standard XSR. The other thing that I would recommend that you do to change the VTX settings, that isn't accessible via the Betaflight on-screen display. What you need to do is to download a Lua script from the FreeSky pages and then copy that onto your SD card inside your radio. And then you can run it and actually change things like the power, band settings and everything else, just like you would with a Betaflight on-screen display. Flying the model is a very pleasant experience. It is set up and aimed, I think, more at pilots who uh, who want a ready-to-fly, who are not interested in building stuff out. All you have to do is set your radio up, and that's probably the hardest part, to be honest, and then you could bind to it and have it flying without any problems at all. You don't have to do all that beta flight stuff that I've just done. That's just kind of me interested in seeing how they've set this thing up out of the box. The camera for FPV works nicely. To fly this, 
is a very pleasant experience. It is very relaxing. In angle and horizon mode, you can pootle around and have a lot of fun. The camera isn't adjustable, so it's kind of looking straight out. So that's the only thing to be aware of. But in angle mode, it, it, flying around in FPV, it's a lot of fun. Flying around in line of sight is also cool as well. It's very easy to see which way this thing is pointing because of the tricopter layout and the fact that it does look like something that should be in the Expanse TV series or something out of Minority Report. So in summary, what do I think? Well, there's a lot of things I like about this. I like the design. I like the look of the thing. It looks really nice. This whole kind of white and uh, accented color layout is very good. It would have been nice if we'd have had some LEDs on here to help with orientation if you did want to fly it in something other than FPV because it is crying out to be flown line of sight because it looks so cool. I do like the fact that the VTX is on the bottom. That's a really smart idea. And the landing gear helps keep that VTX out of harm's way if you're flying on something like concrete or tarmac. It does fly really nicely out of the box. Apart from the radio setup and the binding to the model, there's not a lot you need to do and it wouldn't take you long if you understand the FreeSky radio system to have this flying nicely. It would be interesting to see this being sold as a ready to fly kit with something like the x Lite in corresponding colors so that it was ready to go out of the box. It is a good balance of power for gentle flying around. It is hovering at just under half throttle here with a relatively small 853S battery. Flight time is really nice too. You can get up to about 14 minutes if you go for the maximum size of battery. I do have a couple of niggles about it and I have fed these back to FreeSky and they've taken them on board. The first of all is it's not using a standard camera mount in the front so there isn't the ability to tilt the camera so that you're not looking at the ground all the time. The lack of a standard camera support also means that if you did want to change it out, maybe change it for a camera that had better low light capability or for a newer camera that had better performance, that isn't going to be easy. There isn't any room on here for an action camera either. There's no shelf. You could probably build one out of foam and kind of jerry-rig something, but it's not going to look as nice as this. Maybe something like a Runcam hybrid in the front to record in 1080p might have been an interesting option. There isn't any GPS in here either. This is beta flight. There isn't any recovery mode in here either. There potentially is room inside that big bulbous canopy to have a little GPS. So be careful of that if you're relatively new and you're getting this because you want a ready to fly and to uh, have some adventures with FPV that isn't the return to home failsafe that you've got in some other explorers. I think the battery bay could have been a little bit bigger. Behind the battery bay there's a number of struts that are there for reinforcing of the back part of the model. Now the way this is designed, it's a very good looking model, but by pushing the tail out just a little bit, you could have got a much larger battery in, maybe even getting up to a 2200 3S battery, which would have given a little bit more flight time. Again, the body isn't a covering over a much tougher subframe. The body is the frame of the model and it's made of pretty resilient plastic. So the only thing I potentially would be worried about is one of the rotating props at the front getting damaged or snapped or potentially stripping one of the servos in the middle that control it. But like I said, so far so good here with the knocks that I've had with it, it shrugged those off without any problem at all. So in summary, I like this. I think it's a really interesting first attempt at a quite a funky tricopter from FreeSky. It's going to be interesting to watch what FreeSky do with their models in future, because this isn't particularly expensive as a model, considering what it is. And FreeSky certainly have the money and market to create some really interesting flying products. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. 
check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.